and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. You're onto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogwele ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenly. presence in this place this is one thing I asked as we release the people this morning to go back to their different base give everyone everyone the revelation of grace everyone nobody can reign without it Nobody can sustain victory without it. So much has happened here. But one mistake after here, the devil will want to rob the people of what you have done in them. But this time they will know that they cannot be robbed anymore. That their mistake does not cancel your plan for their lives. Open the eyes of everyone. From the ministering team, to everyone to have access into the riches of your grace this access is given by understanding that of all the truths revealed in the scripture that this truth will never be hidden from our eyes I give you praise. I give you thanks. Holy Spirit, you know I have 100% confidence in you. What we can do, you can do. Beyond what we're able to teach or say, your ministry continues because your ministry is a 24 hour ministry. It's a seven days ministry. You are the greatest coach, the greatest teacher, the greatest mentor. I ask that your communion, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the intimacy of the Spirit, the transportation, the partnership of the Holy Spirit, be rich in the life of everyone. This year they will know you intimately like they've never known before. And through you, everyone will get to know the Savior for themselves. Why don't you lift your hands and just honor the Holy Spirit. Tell him that you want to walk with him. You know the way a man falls in love with a woman? That's how this thing works. It's a relationship thing. Because everything Jesus died for is one that makes them real in the lives of people. You might not seem the cross will be a dry story that doesn't happen. Calvary was enforced by Pentecost. The cross will just be a story, a Bible story that never has effect. We honor you, we reverence you. 
it is a walk with you that I ask that everyone will know in this year you are the messenger of the covenant you are the one that enforces the covenant Jesus died to establish the covenant you are the one that enforces it in our lives now I also ask my Lord and King that the ministry of angels will be so mightly experienced in this season things will be happening every day every week every month throughout this season that, that abundance the, the angels will be busy bringing in the resources bringing in expansion bringing in souls bringing in the miraculous bringing in confirming words as your people go out stretching for their hands to declare your mighty works unleash unusual ministry of angels in the lives of the people partnership with the unseen is the secret of this season that we are living in anybody whose confidence and strength is in the arm of the flesh we miss big time what God is trying to do don't make that mistake don't make that mistake you remember that song you know I want more of you I want more of you Jesus I know you It's the more I want to know cities Abuja, Port Harcourt, Lagos, Enugu, Onicha, Aba, and then the key to the gates of this nation. We collect it now. It's not with Satan, it's with you, the risen Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you, and you transferred it to your church. For the purpose of administering and establishing your government on earth now in the life of these ones that authority will function at its maximum capacity uh -huh. the lord said i'm um, to tell you don't be afraid to make declarations you know those ones that look like when you say you look like a mad person say it you will know the almighty god has a covenant now to watch what comes out of your mouth to confirm it you don't need to say you have gift of miracle you are not you are all given the authority to walk in the miraculous you are carrying that glory on you the full oppression of the authority that came out with the risen Christ father and the full glory of your resurrection and it rest upon this man without measure now the keys to the gate the gates of wealth 
in all these cities where they are in this nation by the authority in your name we deliver it into their hands the wealth of government the wealth of institutions the wealth of businesses the wealth of ministries the wealth of peoples the world of kings the world of nations authority to govern to administer to harness it to possess it is released in this hour father now move these ministries and these churches into front line move them into the multitude era that's another one it's time for mega churches mega churches that's another one the lord said mega churches 10,000 member churches 10,000 if what you're building is not whatever take it like maybe your children's church that you're building then you do that and get ready for your main auditorium 10,000 member churches you're going to run services you're going to something will just come over the people in the city they will know that this is where they need to be they will not have problem because they have shepherds sent to them by God they have their lives will be put in order in the name of Jesus Christ the riches of revelation the riches of wisdom the gates of wisdom we open up right now the riches of the wisdom of Christ that revelation access to inside the deep insights the deep mysteries in the heart of God are open to you not only that you will have it you will be able to break it down and transmit it to men like bread and fish the gates of God's glory the knowledge and the experience of his presence in a way that human beings will know that the mark of divinity is on your life they will recognize that these men are men of God they will recognize that these ones have been separated by the Almighty God they will recognize it the gates of his glory the riches of his presence let it become your clothing let it become your inheritance father we honor you we thank 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 you another level of ministry begins and now this grace will flow down to the pastors it will flow down to everyone it will flow down to the brethren it will flow down to every person in this ministry and an army will rise that will move in and possess the land we give you thanks we give you praise we give you glory in the name of christ the son of the living god amen who is there like you why don't you lift your hands because once it happens to the head it reaches everyone that's the way god does it you are a likeness Who is a likeness You are blessed To be your very own You are blessed To the great 
John chapter 1 verse 17. We are going to read it while we are standing. The law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. One was given, the other one came. Because it's, grace is a person. Grace is not a message. Grace is a person. Grace is a person. Grace came. In the embodiment of Christ. The law. Came through Moses. The law was given by Moses. But grace and truth. Came through Jesus Christ. Verse 18 said. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten son. Who is in the bosom of the Father? He has declared him. He has revealed him. Verse 14. He said, And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. We beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father. Then, well, how does he conclude? full of grace and truth you can see grace is a person if you want to understand grace it's not favor grace is about the revelation of jesus christ the, and the work he did on the cross you know you hear people who talk about that word grace it's not what i'm talking about they teach favor they teach breakthroughs they teach divine assistance that's not what grace is no that's not what it is Grace is one word that captures the finished work of Christ on the cross. That is the message Apostle Paul was raised to carry. That is the first assignment God gave this ministry. The second is the dominion mandate. Those are the two assignments we are given on earth. The gospel has two sides. The first side is one gospel, but it has two sides, just like your coin. The first side is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The other side is the gospel that Jesus Christ preached. The gospel that Jesus Christ preached is the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the gospel of grace. Listen, the apostleship we are given in this ministry is to bring this order. And this balance to the whole church not just the middle city to the whole continent of africa grace came with him truth came what does the bible call truth it's talking about values everyone say values, values. it's talking about principles everyone say principles that's what me that's what is called the gospel of the kingdom if you don't teach values and don't teach principles society will never be better no matter how much, you will see transformation in the land. Now, what happens is that if grace is overstretched and without the balance of truth or values, you step into error. You start producing the anti, you start producing opposite of what grace is meant to achieve. 
For example, grace does not license sin. Grace is the cure for sin. The preaching of grace doesn't multiply divorce. It stops it. It doesn't unleash immorality. It checks it. That's what people don't know. So when they, they take it and they miss the other balance, the ingredients called truth, they miss that dimension, they, they stretch it into a dangerous zone. Jesus, towards the ending of his ministry, started t- teaching grace when he started talking about his death. All those times he talks about drink my cup, drink, he's no more talking the kingdom. He's now talking about the cross. But the, the, that was one message the people that followed him did not understand. He lost all his disciples. He had close to 500 of them. He had the 12, he had the 70, he had many others. He lost all of them. One time he started teaching on the cross. He lost all of them. The reason is because the message of grace is to begin after his resurrection. You have to get it. What he came to do, the most important assignment he came to do, is to solve the same problem that caused Adam to lose the kingdom or the dominion mandate. So now, grace lays the foundation by dealing with sin, then the kingdom rests on it as the building. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? God wants to give you the kingdom. God wants you to rule the nations. God wants to give you the economy of the land. All of those kingdom things we talk about. But if the foundation is not on grace, you won't have it. Because you see, you see, it was sin that kicked Adam out. It was that same problem that Jesus came to solve primarily and then secondarily to restore back everything Adam lost, to restore back the kingdom to us. Bible said truth. What the Bible is talking about, those timeless principles. You, you see them in Matthew chapter 5. You see throughout his teachings, giving and receiving. When you are talking to people now about giving, you are teaching the kingdom. When you're talking about tithing, you are teaching the kingdom, principles of the kingdom. But that's different from the gospel of grace. Nobody has preached the gospel till you have preached grace. If you get the two together, you have gotten what the Son of God came to earth to give us. The biggest problem to not only the understanding of grace and the functioning in it is what Moses brought. Moses was the one that brought the law. Our biggest problem is law driven law govern mindset so it robs us of the wonderful things and riches that jesus died to make available to us the purpose of christ in bringing grace is to free you from the law you are no more under the law you are not obligated to keep the laws of moses i want to make it clear you are no more under the law. If you, have, you are in Christ, you are under grace. Grace is in the new covenant in the blood of Christ. That's where you are. The causes of the law. What do you call the causes of the law? Punishments for breaking the laws of Moses. The consequences of breaking the laws of Moses. The penalties, the terrible things that happen when a man, when you read Deuteronomy 28, you see them. You are no more under those causes, under those causes. You see? Christ has redeemed you, put Galatians 3 verse 13, from the course of the law. How did he do it? The way he did it is that he allowed, he allowed all those causes to come upon him. If you still carry the causes of the law, then it's being paid for twice. The way he redeemed you from the cause of the law is that he offered himself to God and said, let all the anger, all the judgment, all the punishment, everything that should have come on this man for not keeping your standard, 
your holy and righteous standard. Let it come upon me. So that the blessings of the covenant can now go to him. Because each time somebody is trying to get the blessings, he makes one mistake. That one mistake robs him of everything that God has promised. He said, now let the punishment, let all the judgment come on my head. Let this man now have access to those blessings. That's why it's called grace. It is God's undeserved. It is God's unmerited favor. It is not favor. It's not favor. Favor of men, favor of God. It's not that. It's God's riches at Christ's expense. G-R-A-C. God's riches. Released to you. Not because you merited. Not because you paid. But because Jesus paid. God's riches as, as at Christ's expense. It is God's unqualified. God's unmerited. God's undeserved favor. If you can ever merit it, it's no more grace. If you can work for it, it's no more grace. You need to understand the teachings of the New Testament. You need to understand that New Testament Bible. The law was given to reveal God's moral standards. The law was given to reveal God's righteous and holy standards. But you know, if the law was given to us before the fall, there won't have been any problem. The problem with the law is that now you expect fallen men whose nature is sinful, who have the nature of Satan to keep it. That is the problem God had with the ages. The children of Israel could not and no human being can. God's holy standards are so high that you can't meet them. That's why the scripture said that by the righteousness of the Lord, no flesh shall be justified in the sight of God. It says scripture has concluded all men under sin. So that the only escape route now is by faith in what Christ has done. Anybody that doesn't get, release his faith on that, is doomed to go to hell and is doomed to live in this life without God and without hope. As the Gentiles used to live. Don't just say. I preach the gospel. That Jesus Christ preached. You will be making a grave mistake. Jesus said I have many things to show you. But I can't. You can't handle them. Each time I start. You all want to. You get confused. He starts talking about it. Peter calls him and starts rebuking him. He told the man get thee behind me. He's talking about the cross. The son of man is going to go there and pay the price. They start rebuking him. That's every time he mentions there is confusion among his disciples and among all the people. They, nobody understood that. So how can he give us his blood to eat and give us his body to drink? What kind of crazy talk? And the Bible said most of them deserted him. The two have stayed. He asked them, why are you still doing here? He said, they said, to whom shall we go? You have the words of it. And we have heard you teach the kingdom. There is some, we know that. But this side, we don't understand it, but we will stay. So Jesus told them that the person that will unveil grace is the Holy Spirit. Don't say I'm preaching the gospel that Jesus Christ preached. You will be making a grave mistake. Those things that Jesus said that I cannot get across, that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you. He's talking about the gospel of grace. That's what he raised Paul for. And all the apostolic successions from then had to bear that message or you were a false apostle. As a matter of fact, anybody that preaches the law, the Bible calls it another gospel and it's a gospel that creates bondage. The gospel of Moses is a gospel of condemnation. It's a gospel of ministration of death. It kills people. It's a ministration of bondage. It enslaves. When the scripture says, stand fast in the liberty, whereby Christ has made you free. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. He was not talking about sin. He was talking about the law. The law is the yoke of bondage. The law is the yoke of bondage. That's why many of you, your Christian life is such a struggle. You're struggling to please God. You're struggling to approach God on the basis. Each time you feel that you didn't, you didn't you know, qualify a little, you lose your ability to. But that's not how Christianity is designed to be. You are standing before God. Is Christ standing, not your own? You are, God does not see you in yourself. He sees you in Christ. 
The righteousness that makes you acceptable to God is not your own works. It's Christ's own righteousness. It's a gift. It's not something you attain. The message of grace is this. That you don't attain. You receive what has been accomplished. You glory in victory that you did not. When Paul said we are more than conquerors. A, 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 a gentleman made a wonderful illustration of that. He said, a conqueror is a warrior that went to battle and conquered, defeated the enemy and came back. A general. A conqueror is like a wrestler that went into the ring, knocked down the opponent, defeated him, and got the world belt. A conqueror is like a boxer that went into the ring, knocked out his opponent, and came out with the belt. But a more than conqueror is the one that did not go into the ring. But after the man achieved the victory, he carried that belt and dedicated it to that man and gave it to him. Some of them, we finish fighting all that battle. They pay them all that million dollars. They come home and drop it at the feet of one woman that could not fight. He said, it's your support. It's your this. And my love for you. I'm dedicating all that. And they hand over the whole thing to the wife. That's what Jesus did. That's what he did. You are having problem enjoying what he has accomplished because you are still feeling like I didn't fight the fight. I didn't merit. I didn't do the work of righteousness. I didn't qualify. No. Jesus has qualified you. Jesus is your qualification. Listen, my friends. If you read the Gospels, there are things you see there that many of you don't believe because you are not operating in that. For example, the Bible says, Jesus has been made unto us righteousness. Jesus has been made unto us sanctification. Sanctification is not a product of work. It's also a product of the cross. They say, ah, righteousness is free. But holiness is what you work for. He said, it's a nonsense that people who didn't understand the, the New Testament wrote for us. When you listen to Martin Luther King, when you listen to Charles Finney, who produced some of the holiest people in the body, he will tell you that justification is by faith, sanctification is by faith. When you listen to Charles Spurgeon, when you listen to all those men, even John Wesley, John Wesley keeps emphasizing, justification is by faith, sanctification is what? By faith. Where work is needed is in the kingdom in the expansion in the all the things that have to do with the kingdom that is where reward is also given there is no reward in grace everything is free gift you know what you're going to be crowned for not for your salvation not for your healing not for your sanctification god is not giving you any reward because you live holy it's jesus that made you holy or your you are smelling rat in the sight of god your righteousness is like filter rack what you're going to be rewarded for is all these seeds you're sowing to advance the kingdom. The gospel you're preaching. The souls you're winning. The services you're render. There is work in expanding the kingdom. And it's only those that labor in that direction that will rule with Christ. Everything about the kingdom is based on certain principles that has to be kept and then they are, you are rewarded for it. When it comes to the kingdom, he says, so far we suffer with him that we might what? Reign with him. But when it comes to grace, he said, there is nothing to suffer. He has suffered everything for us. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. By his stripes, we are healed. You can never deserve your healing. You can never marry. You know why many of us are not getting healed? You think, oh, I made mistakes. I did that. So God can heal me. You are taking healing out of grace. You are putting it back in the law. Because during the time of Moses, the condition for getting anything in the covenant is obedience to the laws of Moses. If you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. And many of us, we preachers, put the same condition on New Testament church. You preach as if the cross never happened. You preach as if the cross is irrelevant. You just preach Moses. And condemn the people and kill the people. And the ministry of Moses will destroy. He destroyed out of three million people. He destroyed everybody including the pastor. Buried all of them in the wilderness. 
only two people. When you preach the law, if you bring three million out, only two will make heaven. If you preach grace, if you bring three million out, only one or two will go to hell. It's true. Of all you have given me, I lost none, except the son of perdition. The truth is, we all want to produce godly living in people. The question is, what is the way to it? Is it by preaching the law or by preaching grace? Which one sets people free from sin? I think I need to show you some scripture. Romans chapter 6. This will help because of those like me. The problem I had with not letting the law go is that I said to myself, I don't want to give people license to sin. That's my own because I want to prove this godliness in people. So I'll take the law and preach to them. I did it. But what I saw is that the more of it I preach, the more they are bound to sin. The more of it I preach, the more they are struggling. And those of you who don't know why you're not getting the results of the ministry that you are carrying, and you're wondering, and the easiest result to get is freedom from sin. Easiest result to get is healing, deliverance. The more we preach it, the more people, the demons are oppressing people. And I keep wondering why. Later, and now, when God caused me to honor, He said, Anyone that preaches the law is rearming Satan that Jesus had disarmed. Jesus disarmed principalities and powers. You are just rearming him against God's people. Let's project it. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. I want to show you that. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under what? Freedom from sin does not come from the law. You can never stop anything you are doing by the law. See a man that is bound by cocaine. Teach him to moral instruction, Ten Commandments. Teach him all this. When you finish, he will be condemned. Though. He will feel bad. Stop now. is wahala. See a man that is bound to immorality. Teach him all the things, the Ten Commandments and all that. When you finish, he will feel bad. He will cry. Stop it. The problem of the law is that the law is good. It's holy. It's righteous. But Mankind have been sold under sin. Man is too weak to meet God's righteous standard. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons God gave the law, because sin was there before the law, but somewhere along, like 430 years later, he introduced the law. The reason he said he introduced it is to help everybody to see that they can never meet his righteous standard. The law was given as a mirror to reveal your fault. Is never to remove it. It can never remove it. It's to help you see that you are weak without him. The reason is that so that that law now serves as a schoolmaster or a guide to point you to Christ. What it means is that in the Old Testament, the Ten Commandment makes every Jewish man see their weaknesses, their helplessness, their unrighteousness. The Ten Commandment now makes them see the importance of the lamb that must be sacrificed. It's because of Ten Commandments that the Jews bring those animals to sacrifice. Because once you have seen, you know what will happen to you. You know the consequences. You know how God locks his eyes away from you. He said, the Lord's hands are not shut that he cannot see. His eyes are not blind that he can't see. It's your iniquity has blocked his face from you and has shut in his hand. God can't help you. You are a criminal that deserves judgment. So, but whenever the, the jews break the law god gave them something else after he gave moses the law he said take it to them moses read it to them god also spoke the ten of them from the mountain and the people said all that the lord said we will do the lord said moses you heard what they said they have signed a deal that they will do it moses said yes he said you pastor moses come up to the mountain you're going to burn 40 days so i can write it when Moses came up and God wrote the Ten Commandments and then gave him the remaining laws and ordinances, halfway in the middle of the discussion, 40 days have passed, God said to him, go down quickly for the people you brought out have corrupted themselves. I just stood here now and announced to them 10 things. The first one, they have already broken it. 
Go down and see what is going on. Moses said to the Lord, there is no way they can do that. We said, go down and see. By the time Moses got down, he saw a golden calf and the people bowing. Remember who did the preaching? It was God. It wasn't Moses. Before Moses started teaching the Lord, the Almighty God came on that mount and announced those ten things. The first one, that's what they were doing. Not only that, in the course of worshipping the idol, they all got naked and started sleeping with each other's wives. The Bible said they played and then had sexual orgies because that's how the heathens do it. And who led them into that? Their pastor Aaron. Preach law. Both the high priest, the priest, the pastor, the senior pastor who, who fail. Both the people. Now, why did God give the law? To help the people see their so now that they have seen and he told them remove your rings i will know what to do with you because the anger of god is real or against unrighteousness don't ever take that the anger of god against him is real grace doesn't mean that god is now weak he's tolerating sin no it's just that he has found an antidote for it doesn't mean the electricity doesn't shock anymore it's just that they have found insulators to cover his destructive power so the power can be channeled to produce good. So what happened is this. God said, Moses, come back. I still give you the law. You write it this time, not me. When you finish writing, I will now give you something else. He said, take sacrifices, blood. Tell them when you go down now, take one family, ordain them as priests. Appoint a high priest. Their job is sacrifice. Sin will not stop. These people cannot keep this thing. But if I will not wipe them out, what will save them is this animal. What is the law? To show you your righteousness so you recognize your need for a savior. The law does not cure sin. The law reveals it, condemns the sinner. Grace is what cures it. If you're not going to remain under the dominion of sin, then you have to get out of the law and step into grace. Grace is not a license to sin. Grace is the antidote to sin. Let me give you another scripture. First Corinthians chapter 15. I think you need to take note of what I've said. First Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 56. Project it. Let him see it. 56. Verse 56. Yeah. Look at that. This thing of death is sin. The consequences of sin is death. But the strength of sin is what? Why is it that you've been struggling? The law. Law programmed mentality. If sin is getting stronger and stronger, your mind needs to be liberated from a lifestyle of bondage. It is here. The revelation of grace frees you. I have never known peace and liberty like the one that grace brings. You know, Matthew chapter 28 verse 11, uh, 11 verse 28 said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Learn of me. I am meek and lowly in the heart, and you will find rest to your soul. If you are struggling to please God, your Christianity is such a struggle. I, you see this excitement here. If I leave you without grace, it won't last up to a week. If I don't teach you this. That's why you go to one camp meeting, you make all, write all those things, how many souls you're going to win, all the wonderful things you're going to do. By the end of one week, you have made one or two mistakes, the devil saps everything out of you. You can't sap nothing out of me. You can't. You can't. Watch me year in, year out. You can't find me. A, a, a few times you can even get me tired to start with. Very few. Oh. You can't drain me of life. No. It's not based on my performance. The law is based on performance. It's not based on your performance. If I leave you now without it, see all this power and the glory that you have experienced here. Satan will say, come now. You will just arrange one or other man to... As you are living here, and maybe you raise your voice, he said, have you seen? 
the pastor said, I've commissioned you. The rod is in your hand. The rod is not no more in your hand. Though. It will work with this kind of thing you have said. He said, lie. The rod works with or without you. I don't think you heard what I said. Oh. Oh. Okay. Let me take, let me show you that one. Does miracle happen because you are holy or because you are righteous? Does God use you because you are holy or because you are good? Can I show you why God uses people? Turn to Acts chapter 3, for example. Turn to it, you will see. Verse 12. You know, Peter just raised a crippled man by the gate called Beautiful. He was on his way to prayer meeting. When Peter saw it, that people were screaming and shouting and they were looking at them like these men, where did they come from? When Peter saw it, he answered and said unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why view you at this? Why, why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to... Peter knows very well that if he is by this, he is not yet ready to be used by God. Was it not the one that denied Jesus, swore on top of it? After all, the Lord said, you shall not use the name of the Lord your God. In He did it three times. He is not anywhere. I, I don't know who was talking. If Jesus did not bring grace, if you see the amount of sacrifices we have to be bringing, I'm talking about blood sacrifice now. Animals. This morning, I'm sure some of you will need to offer one. Because sin is not just action, it's thoughts, it's motive, words, and deeds. Then sin is not just commission. I didn't commit fornication. Sin is omission. Some things you should have done, you didn't do. Say to him that no way to do good and do it, it not. To him it is sin. Now you can now understand, failure to understand grace is what has crippled the faith of God's people. So you don't find men doing mighty works because they think God uses them because of their holiness. And if you leave some of us who have the law mentality, if you, God used you to raise a cripple, you just post to the people, yes, do you know how many days fasting I did to get to this level? If you know how many days I was on the mountain, you will know that it's not for your level. Don't let anybody fool you anymore. Miracles happen on the basis of grace. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, take verse 13. It is faith in the name of Jesus. Faith in the finished work of Christ. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of our fathers has glorified his son who? Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He performs miracles so that he, the son of God can be exalted. Not for, because of you. Whom he delivered up. Who he, you denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Verse 14. But he denied the Holy One and the just and desired the murderer to be granted unto you. Verse 15. And killed. He has to go to the cross to explain to them why that man got healed. And killed the Prince of Life whom God has done what? Raised from the dead. This is what is called the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Keep preaching the cross and you will keep delivering people from all kinds of oppression. The secret of liberation is the cross of Jesus Christ. The secret of victory is the cross of Jesus Christ. The secret of the supernatural is the cross of Jesus Christ. The secret to the ministry of the Holy Spirit is the cross of Jesus Christ. When the cross is proclaimed, the Holy Spirit finds his ministry because his job is to confirm it, to enforce it in the lives of the people. Whereof we are witnesses. Verse 16. And his name, true faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him had given him this perfect soundness. When there is faith in the finished work of Christ, when there is faith in the name of Jesus, the miraculous happens. Turn to Galatians chapter 3. There's something I want to show you there. Pick up verse 1. You can become a worker of miracle. O foolish Galatia, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. It's always the cross. It's always the cross. Verse 2. This only, 
I want to learn of you. He wants to fire them question. This is Apostle Paul. Receive you the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Those who preach the law, you won't have the manifestations of the spirit. The law has a level of glory. Oh. I don't have the time to address it today. A level of glory, a level of manifestation goes with it, but it causes more problem. The ministration of the spirit, baptism of the Holy Ghost. You don't get filled with the Holy Spirit because you are holy. You get filled with the Holy Spirit because Jesus has saved you, has borne your sins. You get filled with the Holy Spirit because Jesus, by dying for you, has made it available. You don't say, let me get holy. Let me clean my life. Then the Holy Spirit can come. The Holy Spirit comes to sanctify you. You don't get sanctified to receive him. He comes to sanctify you. Nobody is qualified to have a holy God living in you. It's the blood that qualified you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Neither do you lose the Holy Spirit because you made a mistake or sinned. You don't. As a matter of fact, the new covenant said, when the Holy Spirit comes, it comes to abide with you forever. Even inside in the rapture, there will still be the Holy Spirit in you. <laughs> but let's leave that. V verse 3. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, you are now made perfect by the flesh? Because the moment you step into the law, you step back into the flesh. Struggle. You step back into struggle. Verse 4. Have you suffered so many things in vain? I, I, another discussion on this, but it's not for today. Those who operate by the law always attack those who operate by grace. They get angry with them. They think they are making it too cheap for people. They think that, that you know, that's why Paul was persecuting the church until his own eyes was open. Those that are born of the flesh always attack those that are born of the spirit. Ishmael will always be a problem to Isaac. Those that approach God on the basis of grace, on the basis of sonship, they annoy those who approach him like servants, who are laboring. All these things we are suffering. I fasted too. I did all that. Is that what you are making it so easy for people? They think you are. They want to kill you. That's what causes persecution. The gospel of the law never, is never persecuted anywhere in the world. The Muslims love it. That's what they are preaching. The Hindus love it. They have it there. All religions have it. If you don't want persecution, just keep preaching the law. Everybody loves that. The government will like you. Persecution comes when you preach grace. But yet that's where the power is. When Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto what? Salvation to everyone that believes. The power is in the message of grace. Verse 5. This is what I wanted to know. He that ministered to you the Spirit. If you want to understand how to minister Holy Ghost to people with ease, uh, it takes them three months to receive the Holy Ghost. Because you probably explain, you don't explain it well on the basis of grace. As long as a man thinks he has to qualify, he has to meet, he has to deserve it in any way, it will hinder him, he won't get it. He that ministered the Spirit to you and worked miracles among you, do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. You heard Peter. You heard Peter. It is not by the works of the law that miracles are worked or healings are wrought. You can never deserve your healing. You can never deserve your deliverance. You can never deserve your salvation. You can never. You can never. You can never earn your healing. You can never earn your salvation. You can never earn your deliverance. Understand that Jesus has ended for you. New Testament calls you to, to receive what has been finished for you, not to attain. It's not a call to performance. That's what frees you from the bondage of religion. You know, if you, if you read that scripture, um, come unto me, all ye that labor and the heavy laden. I like the message translation of it, which helps see some of the problems that you can even put it up. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. A message translation if you, if, you, if you have it. Are you tired? Look at that. Worn out. Born out on religion. Come to me. Get away with me and you will recover your life. That's what needs to happen to many of you. 
Don't let this struggle of 2009, 2008 that made so many things not happen. Get back into your life 2010. Are you people hearing what I'm saying? You have to keep these messages you heard in your ear this year. When it looks like light is going out, it's not light going out. It is the revelation that has well. Get the tapes again. Put it here. And then what you will see is that you will just start cruising again. You have to have those fuel in your tank. Don't let it run out. Because the moment you start losing consciousness of grace, you go back into struggle. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Sunday morning, you are not excited about going to church. Something is wrong. Law, 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 religion. Law and religion, they go together. Law, religion. Law, religion. No, you should wake up every morning with a shout. You should wake up every morning with praise in your mouth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because you did nothing to merit it, but Jesus has given it to you. It's a life of gratitude. Yeah, that's why walking in love is not a struggle for a man that understands grace. Because you don't, you, that wants to condemn another, who, who are you? You're a condemned criminal that somebody else redeemed. That's why you can't condemn others. Fine law people, they are very judgmental. They are very critical. They are the ones who pollute the waters of Christianity. But it's a ministry of condemnation. Fault finding ministry. Come to me, get away with me, and you will recover your life. I will show you how to take a real rest. Next year is a year of grace and is a year of rest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Grace launches you into rest. That's what is called the cruising stage. The cruising stage. The cruising. You just cruise. You just cruise. You just cruise. Look at that. Next, verse 29. Walk with me. That's an invitation to relationship. Then walk with me. This is an invitation to partnership. Don't walk for me. God is not looking for servants. He's looking for sons. He's looking for friends. Don't walk with me. Partner with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of what? Grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Why don't you lift your hands and just give the Lord thanks. This is the Christianity that Paul, that the apostles brought to us. Men have robbed us of it. These things are missing now. And people are struggling all over. Learn the first written of grace. Verse 30. Keep company with me and you will learn how to live freely and what? Lightly. Lightly. No bondage. No yoke. No yoke. No bondage. No bondage. No yoke. No heavy burden anymore. That's how you're going to operate in 2010. The line has fallen onto you in prison places. Things will just be happening. Once you plug into grace, you plug into the riches of Christ. Things will just be happening anyhow. Things will just be happening. The devil is mesmerized when we teach this because when you hold the revelation of grace, then everything Jesus did to him, all the things Jesus accomplished on the cross, there is no effect. When you unveil grace, Satan is messed up because that is what runs him out of town. Because all the hold he has on people, he has no legal ground to continue. The law, has, you'll be removed from under the law. So what basis does he have to punish? The devil executes all those judgment and punishment sickness because we broke God's law. He's the avenger of blood. The consequences of sin is death. Now, the way Jesus disarmed Satan is by removing the law. How many of you have read how he disarmed principalities and powers? How many of you have read it? I think I need to show you how he did it. Turn to Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Maybe we'll read from 14 first. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. You know what the it is? The cross, his death and resurrection. The cross is where he made an open show of them. He dis, dis, disarm. Spoil means disarm. Principalities and powers. Made a show of them openly. How did he do it? Verse 15 tells us how he did it. Look at it. 15. 15. Go back to 14. Uh -huh. Look at how he did it. You want to know how Satan would disarm. So you know how not to arm him again. The law is what arms the devil against human beings. 
Satan can only prosecute now on one reason. When the law of the new covenant, which is love, is broken. Anybody that walks in love, Satan can torment him. I don't think you heard what I said. That is the only thing now that gives him license into people's life. Apart from the fact that ignorance is his number one platform anywhere, anytime. If you don't know that one, he will be just be cheating you because he's a common man. It's 419. That's what he be, his business. That's his business. You're a deceiver. Now look at it. Blotting out the handwritings of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Then you see the verse 15. Having spoiled, principal. How he did it is by removing the law. He removed the carpet from under Satan's feet. There was no basis to continue his ministry. That's why we can cast him out anywhere. Casting out demons is the easiest thing a believer can do. If you understand the basis. It's the easiest thing a believer can do. Never argue with demons. There is no basis for argument. Before Jesus went to the cross, he was casting them out and sent his disciples to cast them out by kingdom authority. Now that he has gone to the cross and stripped them, remove the same condition on which they are judging human beings, remove and broke grace, they see the demonic exorcism, it should be the easiest thing for you. The reverse is the simplest ministry. Yeah, it's nothing like stubborn demon, non-stubborn demon. Mm -mm. Now, I read this. So a guy asked me a question. And I want to ask it in case. Because the devil too is good with argument. The guy said to me, Pastor, <laughs> uh, this scripture said Jesus removed ordinances and statutes. That means if I break the Ten Commandments, Satan is still armed. So I said to him, go to First Corinthians chapter 3. He said, if the ministration of death engraving upon tables of stone is the ordinances that were written on stone they grew how much shall the ministration of the spirit now written on the hearts of men and he said if that ministration of condemnation was glorious how much more the minister i said to him which was the ministration that was written on tables of stone he said ten commandments i said first corinthians 13 said don't keep preaching it. Do away with it. The way Jesus did away with the law is by fulfilling it. And met the righteous requirement of the law on our behalf. So that righteousness is no more from keeping the law. It's now by faith in what Christ has done for you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? No. Oh. Christ is the is righteousness. It's the end of the law for righteousness to all that believe. Start reading the epistles. You will realize how to live as a Christian. You read the Gospels. You will understand the kingdom. You see the values that Christianity upholds. You see the principles we should teach. Don't rearm a disarmed enemy. Don't re enthrone an enemy that has been dethroned. I want to show you a secret. There are only two ways for falling out of grace. If you want to fall from grace, there are two ways to do it. You don't fall from grace because you sinned. No. In New Testament, you don't fall from grace because you made a mistake or sin. It doesn't remove you from grace. There are two things that remove a man from grace. He suspends the covenant. Can I show it to you? Eh? Number one is not walking in love. Because that's the law of the new covenant. And that's the law that holds the covenant. If your faith does not function on the basis of love, you are, you are creating problems for yourself. Hebrews chapter 12, look at it. 
I think it's important to know that so that you know what it is to stay away from. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Verse 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. How do people do it? By allowing root of bitterness to spring up and trouble you, thereby many be defied. Bitterness, strife, malice. Nothing suspends the power of the spirit like it. Nothing cripples your faith like it. Nothing suspends grace like it. Now, if you're going to walk in grace, grace is operated by faith. Grace makes all the riches of Christ available. Faith draws it. A life of faith is how you live a life of grace. But a life of love is how to sustain the operation of grace. If you don't walk in love and walk by faith, forget about it. Now, let's look at the second way you fall from grace. If you are the type that you have learned to keep your heart, you don't get into bitterness, you don't get, we have done teaching on that, so I won't want to bother with a stretch that. You know, you don't get into, you forgive, you don't keep malice, you don't gossip about people, you don't do all that. Because love has to do with three things, heart, mouth, and deeds, action. There are those who may not hold things, but the way you speak about other people behind them, you just dis evil speaking, gossip. Uh, you're not working in love. You don't know anything about love. Don't damage people. Don't. The Bible said, if anyone is overtaken by a fault, ye who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest thou also be tempted. He said, for love covers a multitude of sin. Let's leave that. The second way you fall from grace is by going back to the law. Let me tell you what it means. The way a man falls from grace is by trying to approach God on the basis of your performance, on the basis of your works. It's very dangerous. Because it also brings an obligation on you to keep the whole law. Two men went to the temple. One came to God and said, I tithe. I give my offering. I fast twice a week. I do this, I do that. I'm not like that publican there. You know. He's talking to a holy God and he's coming to God on the basis that everything about me is fine. I'm all right. I can stand before you because I'm holy. I have met the requirements. That is the greatest, as the worst assumption you can ever. The Bible said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Being now justified freely by his grace, we have peace with God. So the Bible said, heaven locked his door on him. Jesus is the one teaching him. He's talking about grace here. He said, the other man who had messed up went there and said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. He said, that man left there justified. Jesus used that word, justified. Declared not guilty. The man that did the, we left there justified. The man that made all the condition left there disgrace. He said, for whosoever exalts himself shall be abased. That's where he made that statement. Among other, there are two other places he made it. Whosoever humbles himself shall be exalted. Grace teaches us that we cannot end our standing with God. Jesus ended for us. Let me show it to you. Galatians chapter 5. Verse, from verse 1. Stand fast in the liberty whereby Christ has made you free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage which is the law. Verse 2. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised Christ shall profit you nothing. These are believers that have gotten saved. And not, some people come from jail telling them unless you are circumcised you are not going to. If you get circumcised you are obligated to keep all the laws. That's what Paul was telling them. Verse 3. For I testify 
again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do what? The whole law. You don't choose what to keep. You, are, you break one, you are guilty of all. That's the way the law stated it. If you want to get into that, it's a life of terrible bondage. You will never he script yourself for by the work of the Lord, no flesh shall be justified in the sight of everybody goes on. Verse 4. And this is another thing. Christ is become of no effect unto you. The death on the cross will have no value to you. Whosoever of you that is justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. Stop approaching God on the basis of your performance. Stop approaching God on the basis of who you think, what you think you have done. Stop. Approach him on the basis of Christ's righteousness. On the basis of Christ's merit. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? If you see the liberty and the level of demonstration of God's glory that this will bring in your life. If you see the level of these things you've been struggling, struggling to believe for finances, struggling to be, no. They are free gifts. So I sold my seed. I gave my time. But I don't know why this thing will never come to me. Uh, why God is not giving me a harvest. No. Nothing is being held back for you. Satan has been keeping things for you because you have a law mentality. Are you still here? Are we helping you? Huh? That's actually what Jesus brought. The law came by Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. If you don't understand this, then it's like the coming of Christ had no effect. His death on the cross meant not. For example, let me say this. You are no more exposed to God's anger. God is not angry with you. And will not be angry with you. I don't think you heard what I said. It's not just that God is not God is not angry with you in the present. God will not be angry with you. The death of Christ has removed you from exposure to God's wrath. Another thing that has removed you from is exposure to trial and condemnation in the sight of God. You're not exposed to trial. There's one judgment we are going to face. It's called the judgment seat of Christ. I told you about the kingdom. It's a day of reward. And some people will be rebuked for not doing their part. But people will receive crown. People will receive that. The rest of the world will go and face the judgment, white throne judgment of God. You are exempted from it. If God is still going to punish you and judge you for your sin, then what did he punish Jesus for? Do you know what happened on the cross? <laughs> uh, he said he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement that will bring God's peace was laid upon him. By his stripes we are healed. He said he pleased the father to bruise him. The father did it all. When he has made his soul an offering for sin. Why were you punishing a man that didn't do anything? If you finish punishing her, you come and punish me again. Then that is what is called injustice. That's why Romans chapter 3 verse 3 said that he might be just and the justifier of the one that believes in Jesus Christ. God is just in declaring you not guilty. You have been declared not guilty. I don't think you heard it. You have been justified. You have been declared not guilty. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And God is just in doing it. Why? Because all the blow that should have come on you has been laid on Christ. I can show you 12 scriptures in the New Testament that talks about how that you are no more exposed to God's judgment. For example, look at John chapter 5. Verse 24. Look at that. Everyone say very, very. very, very. Let's say the, the way the Jews who say it. The outside man who say Wallahi talahi. He's swearing. That's very, very means also truly, truly. What it means is, put your hands like this. Say, I solemnly swear. I solemnly Say, Jesus is taking an oath. Now, before I, I, I read, uh, how do we do this thing in the court? Before a man gives witness, who is a lawyer here, please? 
You know, you, you guys are called learned gentlemen. Let's assume you, you are putting me on a witness box. So how do you do it? Tell me. I see people put their hands at it. Then what will you ask me to say? Are you a Christian or a Muslim? I'm a Christian. You're a Christian. Mm. Where's the Bible? I should hold the Bible in my hand. I swear by the yes. Almighty God. I swear by the Almighty God. That the evidence I should give in this court. That the evidence I shall give in this court. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Can everybody say Amen? amen. And I'm standing before you to swear now. Amen. Evidence I'm going to give in this court amen. shall be the truth. Amen. And nothing but the truth. Amen. So help me God. That's what Jesus just did here. He just, in those days, when he wants to mention something that has serious weight, like issue about new birth, he said, verily, verily, except a man is born again. Normally, a Jewish man will say this way, I solemnly swear that invoking the name of God, and they know you shall not use the name of the Lord in vain. That's what Jesus is about to do here. He said, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life. He shall not come into what? Condemnation. But is passed from death unto yeah. Is that Jesus' word has meaning in your, in your life or it doesn't? Okay, let me give you a pistol. Let me give you a pistol. <laughs> Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Let's move to verse 8 so we can get the full context. God commended his love towards us that while we are yet sinners, Christ did what? Died for us. Then verse 9. Much more then, being now justified by his, his blood, we shall be saved from what? The wrath through him. The death of Jesus blocked me. I'm not even going to be exposed to God's wrath at all. I can give you more scripture. Paul said, God has not called you to wrath or to judgment. That's why the scripture said, there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And say, where Isaiah was prophesying about the new covenant, sometimes i like to read it for people because in that place he even used some graphic words and in that case to god was also swearing isaiah 54 verse 4 look at it it was talking about the coming of the new covenant and what will be he said fear not for you shall not be ashamed neither shall thou be confounded thou shall not be put to shame for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and shall not remember the reproach of thy wood he's talking about what the old covenant did that when this new season of grace come all of those kind of things that used to happen you won't remember it verse verse 5 for thy maker is thy husband he's talking about covenant marriage the lord of hosts is his name thy redeemer the holy one of israel the god of the whole age shall he be called verse 6 for the lord has called thee as a woman forsaken that's what the lord did grieved in the spirit a wife of youth when you were refused said thy god verse 8 for no, 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 go back. It's important to read it. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercy will I gather thee. You see, that's what the Lord did. He caused separation. Verse 8. In a little rot, you see? God, in, under the Lord, the Bible said, the Lord walked rot. That's what the New Testament said. Little rot, I hid my face from thee, but for a moment, with everlasting kindness. Everyone said, how, how many years of kindness? No, I'm, I want to be sure. If you go to the book of Hebrew, you see it, that the death of Jesus for us brought us eternal redemption. How many years? No, the kindness of God will come 2010, disappear in 2011. Is that what he said? How many years of kindness? When we tell you that the new covenant has greater riches in it than the old, you, we have not even started understanding it. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, said the Lord thy Redeemer. Then look at verse 9. That's the part I'm actually. Now, God is swearing. We're about to give another evidence now. 
take note of what is about to happen here for as is the waters of noah unto me for as i have sworn everyone says sworn that the waters of noah to no more go over the earth you remember that and he put a covenant of rainbow to back it as a reminder to himself he said in the same way so have i sworn that i will never be angry with thee nor rebuke you it's not promise it's oath you see why you are walking about you think god is angry with you you made some mistake last year eh? i i did this i fell oh that's why god has abandoned you no that's the law it's the law that gives you because under the law when you break it you are abandoned you are disconnected until a lamb is offered to bring about but that's not true a lamb has been offered before you sinned the offering of jesus is not going to wait till something happened it has been offered ahead of time as a matter of fact I don't have the time to get into that scripture. One time in coming, I'm going to show enough scriptures on that subject. The death of Jesus took care of the past, present, and future. If not, how many of you got born again this year? Let me see. Your hand. This year. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. Look at this year. Do you know when Jesus died? He thought he died 2009. It's 2000 years old. How come that thing still redeemed you today? What about one minute to rapture? What about those that will die at the boundary of eternity? What about the babies that will be born just before we move to eternity? That price he paid is still traveling to the end of eternity, the boundary of eternity, taking care of them. Do you know the mystery? The Bible didn't say it ends there. He said it extends to eternity itself. He said he has obtained eternal redemption. I read the book of Hebrew where he said the death of Jesus traveled backward again down to Adam. That's why Adam is in heaven. In case you don't know, Adam is in heaven. That's some of you are looking at me. Adam is in heaven. Because the scripture said because his death traveled right to the first sin and traveled to the end of all sin. Watch. God now said to him, when you finish dying on the cross, go down to the world under and bring this good news to all those people all those old testament saints including adam and bring them out that was one group he went there and preached to those spirits and justified them and brought them out the second group is that the bible said go to the all those spirits that were disobedient like during the time of noah's flood all those people that were massacred by the flood because of their sin he said he went there and declared the gospel to all those spirits that only eight people were saved in their own time brought all of them out I don't know if you had an uncle that died during Noah's flood he's in heaven now why you're going to come back here but I want to show them why Romans chapter 5 Romans chapter 5 I want to show you why 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 Romans chapter 5 show verse 18 so they can see it and therefore as by one man's offense by the offense of one judgment came upon how many men all men to condemnation even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon how many men all men unto justification who now goes to hell the one that refused to believe in Jesus Christ as his savior is it God's fault now? No. Everybody bore Adam's sin. Now, everybody has freedom and open to bear Christ's righteousness. Look at the next verse, verse 19. As by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So, the obedience of one now, many are now made what? Righteous. You see, you are now righteous, not because of your own obedience. But because of Christ's own obedience. Lift your hands and lift your hands. Say it. I'm righteous. I'm righteous. I have right standing with God. I have right relationship with God. Not because of my righteousness. But because of Christ's righteousness. You don't know where I came from. Like Paul, I came from deeper life. We are the ones who used to crucify anybody who talks grace. Oh. There is no way out without this. Way out. 
go back to that uh, Isaiah. Let me show the concluded. I have sworn that I will never be angry with you. Know the book, verse nine, ten. Verse ten. For the mountains shall depart. Oh, it's going on in the court. The hills will be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall my covenant of peace be removed," said the Lord that had mercy on me. If you go where Paul was quoting this, Paul said it in a New Testament language. He said, "I'm persuaded that nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ." He said, "Neither height nor depth, neither life nor death, neither principalities nor powers, not even angels, can separate us." From the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. At the beginning, he said, "Have we heard all this? What shall we say to this? If God be for us, <laughs> the the weapon for the victory you are looking for in 2010. That's what is being in your hand now. That's what is being put in your hand. If there is anybody sick, whether terminal or in terminal, put your hands on your body. I don't care what it is." any part of your body if you can reach the part put your hands there that sickness dies a natural death because it has no place in grace sickness was destroyed by grace on the cross grace is a person god that came here and took my judgment bore my pains do you know that all the blow all the sicknesses all the pain that i deserve because i'm the one that broke the law he paid, he took my place and bore it for me. He bore it for me. That's why many are dying, many are hurting because they don't know. They don't know. The Lord asked me when I was coming out this morning, he said, the greatest thing apart from passing this weapon and truth in the hands of the people, tell them to go and declare it. Declare, preach to both Christians and non-Christians. Many even who are in this faith don't know this. They are suffering, they are struggling. The enemy is bruising them and is tormenting them because this is that message that liberates. That's what T.L. Osborne calls the message that works. This is the message that the Holy Spirit confirms. Everywhere is declared. God bears witness to the word of his grace with signs and wonders and mighty miracles. Take it up, you will know the power of the gospel. There is a, a power that is consuming that thing in your body right now. There is a power that raised Christ from the dead, that resurrected him. It's consuming that sickness. It's consuming that virus. It's consuming that HIV. It's consuming that thing in your system. It eats up the virus for your system. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that sickness to die. I command you, Satan, to lose your hand from God's people. Lose your hand from them right now. You're tormented by a demonic spirit. You're tormented by in dreams, in life, whatever way. Causes, put your hands on your body. You are tormented by sickness. Put your hands on your body. Your liberty has come. I charge you tormenting spirits. You foul forces of hell. You know you have no right to be there. You are operating in deceit. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, leave now. I issue a warrant for your arrest and I command the end of your oppression and your activities in the lives of these ones. Stop your works and maneuver. Stop manipulating their health. Stop manipulating their dreams. Stop manipulating their lives. Stop manipulating their ministries. Stop manipulating their, their, their business. Stop manipulating their finances. Stop manipulating their marriages. Cease for your works. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I declare every one of you free. I declare every one of you free. And do you know what? You are free indeed. You're not going back into bondage again. The torment is over. The sickness is over. You are free from that pain. You are free from that infirmity. You are free from that oppression. In the name of Jesus Christ. As you go to take the communion table, you are celebrating the cross. See your freedom. See your redemption. See your liberty. Nobody can hold you back in bondage. 
if the son of man shall set you free you are free indeed from now finances will come and stay in your hands all those spirits that steal resources steal what god has blessed you with from now the a decree is issued for all of them to desist from their works and maneuver satan you can't touch what belongs to god's people anymore i command you to stop your works and maneuver for now i issue a warrant for the arrest of every thief every spiritual thief every spiritual robber for now you cannot interfere we usher this man into a season of jubilee we usher these women into a season of jubilee we usher these families into a season of jubilee it's time for rest it's time for grace it's time for favor it's time for restoration i want to announce <laughs> If you're having struggle with childbirth next year is your time to go and deliver go back to your husband the power to conceive and to deliver has been restored back to you now in the name of jesus christ there is no barren or down that shall cast their young under the dispensation of grace grace annuls all oppression and all causes it annuls all of them everyone lift up your hands this revelation father i fasten it by the supernatural pain of god on the tables of men's heart on the tables of their mind the enemy will steal it from them you won't be able to wipe it from them but even in the heavens we're fasting this truth they will be falling morning after morning in their sleeps early mornings certain times when they are it will be falling and enlightening them opening their eyes quickening bring flooding them with light causing the riches of your glory the rich of our inheritance to be made known and manifest in the lives of your people thank you lord <laughs> go ahead say something in the spirit We are going to see some amazing things in this season. We are going to see some amazing things. The struggles are over. Even flowing in the miracles is just, it just becomes your natural habitat. If you want to have faith that doesn't shake, get faith that is based on grace. That is New Testament faith. This is how God asked me to close it for now. We are going to open up this cross. There are seals that have been broken in the heavens. We are going to go back and break further seals because there are seven levels of depth. The year we are entering into is a year to possess your inheritance. It's a year to go into the promised land and possess. Here is what the Lord is saying. You don't take the promised land by your minds. You don't take it by your righteousness either. You don't. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Put it on the board. Let them see. The key to reigning in life is grace. The key to reigning in life is grace. It's so amazing. I've also made a research. Any ministry that has it reigns, they will be rich. They will be watch the Copelands, watch the, the Pastor Chris, watch the any minister has it will just be ready. You don't have it, you keep struggling. The key to reign in life is grace. If you want the miraculous to become normal, grace. If you want it to become once in a while, law. They that have received by the offense of one man dead reigned you know satan has been reigning demons have been reigning death has been reigning since adam's fall by the offense of one man but now much more 
they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness those are the two conditions for any both issue here are gifts both came from the cross not one is an attainment those two revelations is what puts you in charge they that receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall do what reign in life to reign over poverty to reign over sickness to reign over demons to be in charge of circumstances to be master of creation to rule over this is the key if you are robbed of this revelation you are robbed of dominion in life you can see what i'm telling you grace is the foundation then the kingdom adam so everything adam lost came back the power of adam is back the glory of adam is has returned but he's sitting on the foundation of grace no more the foundation of your own merit or performance number two these are concluding words the lord said i should tell you that god's gift of grace has made you the heir and owner of the world the world is yours not on the basis of your performance again not on the basis of what you did or what you didn't do on the basis of grace turn to romans chapter 4 verse 13. god's gift of grace free gift has made you the heir of this world the wealth of niger political power all of these things that you find is like some of the things pastor Nob was talking about are also given including the world transfer the promise that he should be the heir of the world this is the promise this is actually the inheritance that we have this is it this is actually what we collected from abraham now in case you don't know the promise that he should be the heir of the world the heir of the world the owners of the land the owner of the earth from now see yourself as an international citizen your world must not end in one locality you're a global citizen some of you need to expand your business to think of the world start thinking about how to comb the world how to conquer the nations but that's our inheritance he said thou art my son this day have i begotten the acts of me and i will give you the nations for your inheritance and the utmost part of the earth for your position so now if you're going to become the master of the city where you pastor you're going to have that territorial influence it's not on the basis of the law it's god's gift of grace that gave you power over the nations the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not made to abraham or to his seed through what the law but how did it come through the righteousness of faith they that have abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness those are the two things required for reigning and for possession verse 14 look at it if they which are of the law are the heirs then faith is made void there is no need for christ that and promise made of none effect jesus died in vain verse 15 because the law walketh rot i told you that before the law is what produces judgment for where there is no law there is no transgression verse 16 therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace why look at the reason to the end that the promise might be sure to how many of the seeds if you make it by the law it will only be joshua and caleb that will get it the rest will lose because they will mess up they will misbehave for example i have given us certain things told us some things you must not break so that you can move into all of the things that god wants you to enjoy yes sin limits but the truth is if you have a revelation of grace even if you have made a mistake it does not stop not the reason it is by grace is to the end that the promise might be what sure to how many 
all the seed of Abraham, if you are in Christ, and no name that is of the Lord, but to that which is of the faith of Abraham, which is the father of us all. Verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations, before him whom he believed. Even the God who quickened the dead and called the dead. That's your pray the faith. Let me tell you, it's time to be a father of nations. I say it's time to be a father, at least of your city. It's time to father states. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's time to father institutions. It's time to father territories. The end world. Join me to tell that friend standing beside you. Tell him the world is yours. God has written a will and will this earth and all the resources in it to you, to you, to you, to you. You are the owner of the wealth of Nigeria. You are the owner of the wealth of the nations. You say you will eat the wealth of nations. You will suck the breast of kings. Put up Psalm 44 verse 2. Look at how they possess the promised land. God is explaining to us how we possess our own inheritance. How thou didst drive out the hidden with thy hand. God did it. Dro drove the hidden with his hand and planted them. How thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. He is one that cleared the giants for them. Look at verse 3. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm what saved them but thy right hand and thy arm and the light of your countenance why because thou favorest them it's grace that gave them the promised land it's grace that gave them the promised land and it's grace that will give you your own inheritance i don't think you heard what i said they did not get it by their sword now you understand it's not their might it's not their fighting skill it's not skill thy arm their mighty hand thy right hand they like your countenance <laughs> because thou favorites them you know when balaam was hired to curse them balaam said something that blew my mind balaam climbed the mountain and looked at them he said there is no righteousness in jacob there is no transgression in israel because of that there is no difference and i asked the lord these guys that have been rebellious and sinning how come the devil can't see any unrighteousness he said that's the purpose of the blood every charge everything is eliminated so on the basis of that he said there is now no divination against jacob no incantation against what as even in the old testament when they had all those imperfect sacrifices now here is the issue it's easy to understand that it's not by power it's not by might that you get it what about the other side this is where i want to leave you as you go god also said they did not inherit by their righteousness put up the 29 i want them to see that one it's very important it's because of how holy you are that this year will open up for you mm -mm. i leave you like that satan will rob you flat i know that gentleman He's not a gentleman. I know him. But he has this. He has me. Deuteronomy chapter 9. <laughs> Verse 1. Hear, O Israel, thou art to pass over this Jordan this day to go in and possess the nations greater and mightier than yourself. Cities great and fence up to heaven. And the people that live there are giants. I know where you go now. Where is the finances? You will meet them. Giant, you, you want to collapse inside you. No, remember something. You are You are going to go over now to possess the land. To possess cities. Fortify cities. And the people that did there are mightier than you. They are stronger than you. But look at what he said. Verse 2. A people great and tall. Children of the Anna kings. Giants. Whom thou knowest. And of whom thou hast heard. Say, who can stand before the children of Anna? Then look at verse 3. He said, understand therefore this day that the Lord thy God, he is the one that goes over before thee as what a consuming fire. Believe 
me, brothers and sisters, I have come to preach. I am give, giving this thing to put in your hand. This is the blueprint for this end time season. God is going to be traveling ahead of you. You are going to have the manifestation of the glory of God. What? A consuming fire. Now, see what he said. And he shall destroy them. He shall bring them down before your face. So you shall get them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord has said unto thee. Look at verse 4. Look at verse 4. The Lord now says, Speak not thou in your heart. After the Lord your God has cast them out from before thee, saying, For my righteousness, the Lord has brought me into to possess this land. You know, 100 million. If you know, if you know, uh, you know how many days I fasted and all the things like that. That's why God brought this. Watch now, you know, for my righteousness. But for the wickedness of this nation, the Lord doth drive them out from before them. Look at verse 5. I want you to see a secret. For not for thy righteousness or for the uprightness of your heart, dost thou go to possess their land. But for the wickedness of this nation, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. And that he may what? Perform the word. The Lord swear unto thy fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and the reason God is enforcing this is that he might perform the oath he made with Jesus. Verse 6. This is a very important part. Understand for that the Lord thy God gave thee not this good land to possess it for your what? Right. For that what? Do you know why that statement is there? God knows that you make a mistake and you fail. Sometimes you are even stubborn. Grace is God doing what he does in spite of you. Get God will still do what he needs to do in spite of you. He's doing it because of Jesus and the oath, the covenant he has made with him. It is God's riches at Christ's expense, not your expense. You paid nothing. He paid it all. You deserve nothing, but he got it for you. That's why never cease to live a life of thanksgiving. Things will be happening for you anyhow, but always remember <laughs> just to keep giving him thanks. Just, 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 just to keep doing that. God's habitation is praise. He's set under habits, mumbling and complaining. Don't make a certain. Don't. But thou is thief naked people. Verse 7. Remember and forget not how you provoke the Lord your God to rot in the wilderness. From the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until you came unto this place, you have been rebellious against the Lord. And from the day you gave your life to your Christ, now you have been messing up. You have been. Be Do, any of you who can say, I've never been blown in once. Let me see your hand. From the time I got my. By faith we start, friend. It's by grace. Jesus paid it all, my dear. He sorted out the stuff. Let God help us to carry this message. We will save Nigeria. We will save our journey. And then to bring the kingdom, we will see this country transform. The kingdom creates success. It, it, it releases principles that work anywhere, anytime. Why don't you lift your hands and just thank God? You know, you know, even if you don't know, care, it's weapon that we're putting in your hands. Weapon. 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 You can't be defeated again. You cannot be defeated again. If you get this truth, you cannot be defeated again. Father, today we receive communion and by this we seal everything you have spoken to us in this meeting this weekend. We glorify your name. Bless communion. As we repeat, we receive grace. We receive your mercies. We receive your love. 
we receive victory we receive faith thank you father glory be to your name in jesus name amen by this message please your experience with pastor david ogwele email address dominion image media at yahoo.com or call 01-792-687-0803-435-7959 0803-590-9900